Hey, my name is Lizzie Smiley, and I absolutely love helping people connect with their calling and all the tools they need to kick roadblocks and excuses right out the door so they can cultivate the life they dream about. If you want to launch, grow, pivot, or scale your Etsy shop, or you've always wanted to develop the mindset and skills to run your own business, then I'm your girl. I've had that entrepreneurial spirit going strong since my very first lemonade stand, and now I'm a work-at-home mama with multiple online companies and a full-time Etsy shop, all while being present with my kids for the everyday chaos and most important milestones. On this podcast, we'll talk about all things business, mindset, Etsy, creativity, dazzling our customers, and so much more. There's plenty of room at this table for you, so scooch on in and let's go. I'm holding nothing back. Welcome to How to Sell Your Stuff on Etsy. I'm so glad you're here. Hey, you guys. Welcome, welcome, welcome back to the podcast this week. How are things going? I can't believe how fast summer is flying by. I can't believe we're past 4th of July. We're like, it's only a few weeks until school starts again. Ours starts really early. I don't know why. They start like August, you know, like 10th, 12th. I don't even know what the dates are, but like in a few weeks, I'm just astonished that we have gotten this far, but I hope you are doing super well. I am vibrating with excitement about today's episode for so many reasons. So um, Allison J. Prince is a huge name in the e-commerce world, and I have been learning from her for for years and years and years. In fact, um, a number of years ago, I, so I've, I've always been a listener of the um, Jenna Kutcher podcast. I've listened to it forever and like every episode. And This, the way that I found Allison was actually on her, on Jenna's podcast, like many years ago. And the episode captured my attention so much. Like I was so entranced by it that I literally, it is, it is the one podcast episode I have shared more times than any other podcast episode about any topic, like literally about parenting or personal stuff or in, you know, like hobbies or business. I have never shared a podcast, let alone an episode as many times as I have passed the episode on where I learned about Allison, because the thing she was saying was so different than other, it was just like new information and really got my brain going. Um, And so like fast forward, here we are years later, and Allison is now coming on to our podcast to talk to us today about influencer marketing, which is just like a massive massive opportunity for you guys and completely change the game and can completely take what's otherwise a dead shop or a situation where you're not sure what what direction to go and flip it and just completely catapult your business. So let me tell you a little bit about Allison from her bio. Allison J. Prince has built four multi-million dollar online businesses from the ground up. She's been featured in Forbes on the cover of Costco Connection and has spoken on stages across the country. She feels her most successful business choice was teaching her 10 and 13 year old daughters how to sell over $100,000 in products in just nine months. She watched them gain confidence, embrace entrepreneurship, and begin to live what she terms the because I can life. While continuing to run her companies, Allison is also committed to helping others achieve their financial goals. Through her successful zero to 100K a uh, hundred thousand K system and her podcast, how to sell online. She now teaches thousands how to create launch and grow profitable e-commerce businesses. Members of the, because I can life appreciate her authentic down to earth approach to business and life along with her constant encouragement that they have the ability to do whatever they put their minds to. Why? Because they can. Oh gosh. It's so fun saying that on my own podcast. Cause I've heard it literally hundreds of times. So um, she has an awesome podcast that I listen to every week. The become, it used to be called the Because I Can podcast. It's old habits die hard. And now it is the How to Sell Online podcast. Um, and her course, that zero to 100,000 K that she mentioned is the one that I took a number of years ago, um, also with my stepdaughters. So i um, very excited. I I'm, I'm, I want to tell you to like buckle your seatbelts because it doesn't matter what you sell or where you're at in your Etsy business, or even if you have one yet, or if you're moving to your own website, what you're going to hear and learn today is going to give you so many ideas and show you a path forward for how you can really like get your business off the ground, like in the next few weeks. It's that, it's that real. It's that exciting. So, okay. Enough of that. Please help me welcome the wonderful Allison J. Prince to the podcast. Allison, hi, welcome to the podcast. Lizzie, I'm so glad to be here. Thank you for inviting me. Well, it's only just a 
bucket list dream I've had for five years. It's no big deal. <laughs> and I'm totally like calm, cool, collected over here. It's nothing. Um, you totally are. My- <laughs> See, here's the cool thing though. Like, first of all, I get to be with you, but what I'm really excited about is my precious, amazing, wonderful people get to hear what you share with the world, which is unlike anything we've ever talked about here before. So like, I'm kind of like shaking with excitement for them because I know just like me five years ago or whatever it was listening to you on Jenna Kutcher's podcast, my jaw was on the floor for 30 minutes and I was never the same. Like the ideas I had, like it, this is going to be so inspiring. Oh, well, we're just showing up and God's going to lead us. How's that? that? We're all here for that around here. We're, we're very here for that. <laughs> I, and I, so we've got to, st- I want to do very little talking. I would love for them to hear your story, your background, how you got into e-commerce because it's all, it's just phenomenal. Okay. Well, let's dive into it. But first off, I just have to say, Lizzie, there's going to be someone listening today that's really going to have their life changed. You want to know how I know this? It's because number one, you're having tech issues, right? Number two, you can't get your lighting to work. Number three, it is an absolute storm out here. I didn't know if my internet was going to be working. We, I've been up since like 2, 2.30 this morning because the lightning was so incredible and then the thunder was so loud. And whenever I feel resistance towards something, when things happen, it means there's someone on the other side. So one of your listeners, yeah. their life is going to be absolutely changed by something that we say today. And I just, I know that to be truth because when I started some of my businesses, all heck broke, broke loose. Yeah. And I think it was a distraction. It was, it, there was some, it's supposed to be some type of distraction so that we don't step into who God needs us to be right? We're over here fiddling with this. And uh, Satan is like, you know what? I don't want you to move forward. I want you to be miserable. And I don't want you to change other people's lives. So I'm going to either put self-doubt in your way. I, I, This is not scripture, but I do think that Satan has something to do with the internet. Because every time I try and go on and do something, usually I crash. And I'm like, for real, Satan? Come on, get out of internet land. And so I just, I really feel like someone in your audience is going to really resonate with this, uh, what we're about to say. And I'm just so excited for them because it was hard for both of us to get here. So whoever <laughs> it is, I'm just so excited for you. <laughs> okay, One so let me- million percent, yes. <laughs> Perfect. Okay, so let me back up and tell you where... I got started. I was a junior high school teacher. I taught math and science. And I remember four years, four years of studying math and science, right? Taking the big tests, uh, it cost about 30 grand to get my teaching degree. And I remember I went in and my first month of working and they handed me my first paycheck and I looked at it and I was like, this is for a week, right? (laughs) And they said, no, 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 this is a month. And I was like, that means I qualify for government assistance. And they said, welcome to teaching. And I, it was like a slap in my face because maybe you were told this too, like if you go to college, you'll have financial security, right? And Oh, and every little girl was told to be a teacher too. We were all set, like everyone was encouraged to be a teacher, especially if you were a girl. Yes, yes, yes. And so I was thinking financial security and not being able to pay for my own food, those two aren't lining up. And so I was starting to realize that maybe that's not the truth. And it wasn't that my parents or my teachers were trying to lead me in the wrong way. It's just what we were, just everybody was told to do, right? And so I went to the library because I didn't have a phone. I didn't even have a computer at that point in my life. I know I'm dating myself a little bit. And and I remember going to the library because I couldn't afford (laughs) books or magazines. And I remember flipping through like entrepreneur magazines and ink magazines. And I'm like, how do these people pay for things? How do they pay for houses and cars and food, toilet paper for crying out loud? How do they do this? And everything I kept running into is entrepreneurship, like build a business, build a business. And I was like, oh, I just spent four years studying math and science. How in the world am I going to build a business? And then, so we'll speed it up a little bit. And I'm just dabbling in things here and there and just letting those thoughts kind of sit in my head. My husband was going to school full time. I'm still teaching. Uh, and fast forward to where I have four kids and I just got sick and tired of it. My husband had graduated, but I'm, 
and he was working as a physical therapist and I can't complain. Uh, but when we'd go, like my dream was to go to Disneyland without being in debt. And honestly, I just mm. wanted to buy churros for everyone. So I didn't have to split my dang churro with my kids. I mean, you got a whole bunch of mouths sucking on your churro. It's disgusting by the time it gets to you, right? And so it was kind of like this little selfish thing. Like, I just want to go to Disney and get a churro by myself. <laughs> um, and so anyway, uh, so I, I put that as the dream. And I imagined like what the churros would smell like and every kid having their own churro. And I was like, how can I do that? What can I, what can I do with what I have? So I looked around. There was some leftover vinyl lettering. I'm sure a lot of people know what vinyl lettering is. It's like oh, yeah. black sticky paper. You can cut it out, put it on the wall. Um, my cutter didn't work. And so I took my kitchen scissors and I cut it into 10, 12 inch chunks. I had a friend, Jimmy rig a site for me uh, just to get it up because I didn't know that there were options out there. I just lived in my little veggie tail world with my kids. I didn't know there were options out there. And so I put my first product up online and I sold my first two to $300. And Literally, it felt like I had won the lottery. If I had ever won the lottery, I'm sure it's very comparable. And it was because the belief became real to me. I had heard people making money online and like there's a lot of scammers out there and too good to yeah. be true and all that kind of stuff, right? And so when I made that first two to $300, I just let it sit with me for a second. I mean, I, I threw a dance party and I screamed and I yelled and Absolutely cheered. Absolutely, you did. <laughs> That's for sale, yes. <laughs> it's so, like, I, I remember it so clearly. And I remember saying, I didn't need to ask for a raise. I didn't need to ask a boss to do this. I just created money. I just, I had an idea and it turned into cash. And I was like, that's it. That's the belief that I needed. And so the next day, so I sold out because I didn't have that much. I sold out and then the next day I put a product up. It didn't sell. The third day I put a product up and it didn't sell. Lizzie, that night, I remember we were in the garage. I was with my husband and I was like, babe, I think I just got lucky. I think, you know, let's go celebrate at the dollar at uh, McDonald's drive through and get an ice cream cone, you know. And as I was standing there talking to him, he kind of, he's listening to me, but he's distracted with something else. And I heard the words come so clearly to me, Allison, I just showed you it's possible. How dare you quit? And I turned to my husband. I'm like, do you say something? He's like, no. <laughs> what are you talking about? And he's like, what voices are you listening to in your head, Allison? Right. And <laughs> I'm like, I, I think I'm supposed to keep doing this. And my husband's like, whatever, I'll support you, whatever. And so the next day um, I get up and uh, okay, I only have from five in the morning till seven in the morning because I have too many kids and they all need me, right? And so I had to be done. I had two hours. I'm sacrificing my sleep. I'm not a morning person, I'm a night person. So I'm like fourth day, like I don't wanna do this anymore. I don't want, like it's, I'm tired. I didn't sell, this isn't gonna work, like all the things, right? But I just remember that so clearly. And so I got up five o'clock in the morning, I hit publish at seven, and I ended up selling out of that next product on day four. I don't even remember what it was, but, and, and that's, I think that's so cool. I learned this process, it's not the product. I learned the process. I learned that you keep showing up. I learned that you look for what I call God's glitter. When you are just wanting to give up, when the world is falling in, when your kids are yelling at you, when you haven't slept and you're tired, just look for God's glitter. He wants you to create money. Why? Because he lives an abundant life. And if we're like him, why shouldn't we live an abundant life? Right? And so, I mean, to the point where he wants us to have so much money that we have to give it away to help charities. Because yeah. what do charities do? They do really good things. Um, and so I know it was a little bit of a sermon right there, but I made God my business partner at that moment. I said, you know what? If I'm gonna do this, I gotta have a lot more insight than this junior high math teacher brain. Will you be my business partner? And God said, yes. And I'll tell you what, he's been the best business partner I've ever had. <laughs> and he's constantly pushing me. He's constantly, I don't think I've seen my comfort zone in like 14 years. 
because growth happens outside of the comfort zone, right? Growth doesn't happen. Like comfort for me is watching Netflix. It's eating milk duds. It's taking naps. I don't <laughs> grow. I mean, my waistline would grow, right? But I don't <laughs> grow to who God needs me to be to serve. Like that's why he put us here is so we can connect and serve. And we know that because it just, that feels so good when we help other people out, right? Uh, and so I decided, okay, we're going to do this. I'm going to get in the front row of this roller coaster ride that I'm about to expect. So I'm in the front row. God's in the front row. We're going on this roller coaster ride. And I showed up and I got in every single morning for seven years before we sold oh my it. Gosh. Five, seven five years. To seven a.m. for seven years. <laughs> Now, it did get a little bit better when we figured out the technology and I could schedule the night before, but it was so manual in the beginning. Everything was breaking. I didn't know how to ship. I didn't know to stick inserts in it. I didn't know anything. Yeah. I just said, you know what? I'm going to do a rep. I'm going to do a rep. I'm just going to learn and then I'm going to see what works and what doesn't work. And what doesn't work, I'm going to quit doing that. And what works, I'm going to do that over and over and over again. And so I kept going. I kept going. Uh, and then my daughters were starting to sleep in, you know, teenagers, they're, they're getting older, right? So they're becoming teenagers and uh, they're not really wanting to do chores. You know how that goes, right? And so my husband and I decided to give them three choices. They could uh, either do more chores, build a business. And then the third one was like, or you'd move out of the house. Like you got to choose one. <laughs> you got to choose one. We got to go somewhere. <laughs> And so honestly, I'm glad they didn't move out of the house because we love having them around. Um, and then they didn't want to do more chores, right? And so they said, we'll do a business. So I gave them the same principles that I'll, I'll talk about in just a minute. The same principles to them. It worked for me. It worked for them. Like this is something that's going to work forever and ever and ever. And uh, so I gave them these, these principles. They put them into action and they made their first six figures before they stepped foot into high school and they sold scarves. That's what people are like, Oh, they must've had a brilliant shark tank idea. And I'm like, it was a scarf. <laughs> and then I'm like, I sold vinyl lettering. I sold cupcake liners. I actually have a block of wood right here. I sold blocks of wood. This paid off my minivan in full. Like you don't have to have these brilliant ideas. You just have to know the process of how to do it. And so then my sister was like, can you help me? I'm like, yep. And so I helped her and she used that money to buy a roof and pay for adoption in full. And I'm like, what? I got to show more people how to do this because people do really cool things with money. Like I have a new niece because I taught my sister how to create money. And then I started teaching friends how to do it. And then there is where God comes back in again, loud, loud. And he's like, you need to start teaching online. And I said, uh-uh, no, I sell e-commerce. I hide behind my screen. I sell my cupcake liners. I sell my paper straws. Uh, jewelry, do not make me be the face of my company. No, 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 no. And uh, he laughed <laughs> and he yelled a little louder. <laughs> I got a thick <laughs> skull. And then I started another business and it was a pillowcase business. And we did that without social media without uh, me being the brand. Um, we ended up selling that business too. And then the voice, he just kept getting louder and he's patient with me. I'm like, fine. If you want me to teach, you've got to introduce me to the right coaches. Cause I've never gone down this path yes. before. And I'm afraid people are going to yes. make fun of my eyebrows and my hair and the way I talk and I stutter and I'm not a public speaker. I'm like, no, no, no. And he's like, just trust me. Like you trusted me before. And so he started introducing me to these coaches. Coaches are not cheap. No. And he's like, just trust me. Just trust me. My first coach I paid $25,000 for. My husband's like, what? I'm like, I'm just trusting the process, trusting the process. And so I start teaching others online. And then I start getting these emails about other people having success. And this is like the true deep success where uh, a student was like, hey, um, I uh, was living in an apartment with two kids and I was pregnant with my third. Now I have enough money to pay for a down payment on my house. Thank you so much. 
And, and I'm hearing these stories and I've done another podcast um, interview. I've got a podcast too, where I interview a lot of um, people who've grown their businesses and one lady, um, I actually had to use a alias name because of a really bad situation. Her ex had kicked her and her three kids out of the house. She was sleeping in a car and someone else paid for her to get the program. So she started, she now owns a multi-million dollar t-shirt company but I had to do it under an alias name because she didn't want her ex-husband to know. Yeah. And so I'm very cautious um, of that. And, and, and so as I started hearing these stories, I was like, oh my gosh, I know what I need to do. I need to start making more teaching, more education a priority. And so I ended up selling um, oh, two of the businesses at the time. I still have a few because I'm obsessed with e-commerce. I love it so much. <laughs> um, and so I still have a few businesses uh, or a couple of businesses that I still run. Uh, and so now I can really focus and let my students be the stars. Uh, and then I get to just teach and say, hey, this is what's working. Go implement it in your business. Like TikTok and TikTok shops are crushing it right now, right? Yes. And I'm watching my students yes. and I go back in. I'm like, whoa, 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 right? And really just you have to stay fresh in what's going on. Um, and so that's, I, I know, a long, <laughs> a long answer uh, to your fast question, but there was just so many aspects of it. Number one, it was the belief. Number two, celebrating my success so that I had confidence to take the next step. Number three, trusting the process and then just showing up every single day, even when I didn't want to, even when I was sick, even when I had baby puke on me, you know, like it, you just show up, you just show up. Uh, so that's, that's kind of the backstory of it all. If you guys haven't jumped onto the Everbee bandwagon yet, this is your sign to check it out ASAP. If you haven't heard of it before, Everbee is a free tool that can help you find trends, products, and niches that are hot sellers on Etsy right now. I personally use it in tandem with Sales Samurai because they do totally different things. And I literally don't think I could compete in the current Etsy marketplace today without it or help you guys as effectively. Um, Everbee gives me so much information that I can't glean just from studying Etsy. All you need is a laptop or desktop. You can't do it on your phone, so you do need a laptop or whatever. A Google Chrome browser, a quick install of the Everbee extension. And for my tech challenge friends, I promise you it's super simple. And then you will gain access to a whole new world of data about your niche and competitors. So this is a tool I use every single day um, for my own Etsy shop research, for coaching calls that I do with you guys all the time, for shop reviews I do for you guys all the time. And just as I work on growing my personal mastery of Etsy, these tools have, have become so instrumental in getting the results that I do. And I, I mean, I can still use my old school tactics. I still use them, but I... I don't use them alone anymore because it's just, it's a whole different ball game. So these guys have just been a game changer for me. I use Everbee to learn everything about bestsellers and high performing listings. It shows me, okay, I'm going to give you a rundown. It shows me how many sales a shop makes from each listing. I can see how many they've sold of it, how much money that listing has made them or is earning them every month, how old the listing is, like how, how early did they get on on that, on that trend, what their tags are and how competitive those tags are. It gives me an at-a-glance view of all the shop data, um, which sometimes I can't otherwise find, and like the competitor listing data that I need to help my students and myself find ways to penetrate the market. So like I said before, Etsy has a totally free version, like not just a free trial. There is a free version so everyone can get access to it. Download Down in the show notes, I have a link to their site for you so you can um, check it out. And I've also included a quick YouTube tutorial to show you exactly how I use it because sometimes like the barrier to entry is trying to figure out new technology. So I got you. Just go watch. It's a quick video. It'll show you how to navigate it. So if you don't have it yet, get Everbee. Jump on that today. I'm so excited for you to get this edge on the market you're going to love it. It's a game changer. But it's it's pure magic. And I sit here, I mean, it's probably the 30th, maybe 100th time I have heard that. And it's it's every time something different hits me, <laughs> I'm just, it's just so good. And you know what I love? And, and this is something we actually haven't talked about on this podcast before either. You never know. You, you literally put God dust through your whole story about this. You never know when what you're doing and what you're struggling with right now isn't even about you. It's about 
the other people that it's going to influence. Like we get all in yeah. our head in our own little world about like, oh, this is what I got to do for me and for my family and for this or, or you know, for those of us who are, um, who are, who are Christian or even those, I, we have a lot, I have a very diverse following and my whole thing is like, everybody is welcome here. I'm going to be authentic to who I am and they, they know yeah. I'm Christian yeah. and I let my guests be who they are and it's awesome, but I've got a wide gamut and I love them all. But like, it's it doesn't even perfect. matter. That's what it's makes like, the world oh, lovely. Exactly. I love, and some of them are, we, we chat and it's my favorite. I love the diversity, but it's, you never know. It's like not just about you. We get in our heads, but no. it's never just about you. Okay. So this really interesting thing, this, this is, oh, I'm so excited to talk to you about this, Allison. This really interesting thing is happening in the Etsy space, which I'm sure you know about because you are the e-commerce queen. We're seeing a lot of interest in digital products, like massive growth in digital products. And we're seeing um, a lot of a lot in the print on demand space, which is physical products. But something I think that you do really, really well, and that I want to invite those of us who are listening, who, who really feel pulled to that physical product. There's like, I know that there's more hassle in all of this stuff, but I think there's so much magic to it. And so I would love for you to talk about a little bit about just the magic, the awesomeness of physical products and what they can really do for a business in a, in a space where everyone's feeling like, maybe I should be doing digital. Maybe I should move into print on demand. So I would just love your thoughts. Well, physical, uh, when I have, like you hear it all the time, like I'm not impacting lives. I'm not changing lives. Oh my gosh. I would get so many emails from cupcake liners because I would say <laughs> instead of doing your kids' dishes, right? The peanut butter and the apples on a plastic Ikea plate that you have to scrub for 10 minutes, right? I'm like, no, just put it in a cupcake liner and then chuck the cupcake liner. And they'd be like, oh my gosh, you saved me. Like, and I got an extra 10 minutes of sleep because of you. And I was like, yes, yes. Like when you sell products online, think about your customer situation. Yeah. So if you're thinking like, what about digital products? That doesn't change lives. What, make a product that changes lives, right? We've got chat GPT. I went on chat GPT the other day because someone was like, well, wall art, digital wall art doesn't change lives. And I was like, oh, watch. Oh. So I went over to chat GPT and I said, what are some pain points? And I said, give me 10 pain points that wall art solves for customers. And it gave me a list of 10 beautiful things. One thing you print it out, you put it on the wall that covers a, a hole in the wall. And then you don't have to paint and repair the wall. Oh, I hate painting. I'll buy that thing, right? Because they solved my problem. And so we have to remember when we sell products, it is never about us. It is always about serving our customers. When I sold blocks of wood, I just didn't say sell or buy these naked blocks of wood. They're cute, right? I talked about the pain of trying to figure out what to do for Mother's Day. And I'm like, Get your kids' pictures, mod podge them on the blocks of wood, tie a big bow around them, and then hand them to mom for Mother's Day. She's going to put that thing on her mantle for years to come. That's what people bought. They bought the dream. They bought the vision of the product that I was selling. And so I think that's one thing. What are your products doing to solve people's problems? And another one, okay, t-shirts, print on demand. T-shirts is a big one. People are like, it's saturated. Everybody sells T-shirts. I can't do that. And I'm like, uh-huh. I've had students create million-dollar businesses in the last couple of years around T-shirts. So those lies in your head, can we set them aside and allow you to believe something else that is true versus what you've been told your whole life? I sold T-shirts and I was like, and I made it because I was nervous uh, speaking on stage one time. And I made a shirt that uh, said, because I can on it. And I got up and I did that presentation. And I remember thinking, okay, if Clark Kent can go from business guy and put on his cape, why can't I have a cape up on stage? Let me transform into who I need to be to go save or help these people, right? And so I said, this shirt may have magical, has been known to have magical threads in there to give you the confidence to do the things that may be uncomfortable in life. And I had so many people ask for that shirt because selling online is uncomfortable. You're putting your face out there. You are doing things you've never done before. And so now I have people send me pictures all the time and be like, thank you for this shirt. I really think it does have magical threads in it. 
And so I just told that story and how it built confidence in them. And so if you're struggling with it's saturated with my product doesn't really do anything, just go cheat and look on chat GPT of all the reasons why we need these products and why your product is incredibly value, valuable for the customer that is looking for you, looking for your product. Okay. And then what okay. was the second part of that question? Well, no, it was like, okay. <laughs> honestly, I, I liked the way you answered it better. Like it, it, it went a different direction, but I actually liked that better because it served everyone who's listening. I, I was really curious about like, you know, you're one of the people still in the game who's really physical products oriented, you know, and, and, but you already touched yeah. on that, but there's something I've always wanted to ask you. Tell me, tell me if we need to skip this one, but I've always wanted to know how you got so good at story. Like, how did you, I just, I don't think this way. You like look at these blocks of wood and I'm thinking like recycling bin and like, <laughs> like the compost pile. And you're thinking like Mother's Day gift. And I want to know if you have, do you have any tips on like how to, how to change the way you look at things on how to come up with a story and cast the vision for like products like that? Yeah. You wake up for seven years from five in the morning till seven in the morning and you do it mm -hmm. consistently. That's how I can do it off the top of my head so fast right now. But when I first got started, it was a hot freaking mess. There was a reason why I didn't sell product. Every single product is one of them. Um, I was selling these gable boxes like that had the cookies in them. Um, yes. And they didn't sell. And I was like, get your white, cute gable boxes. There's a reason for it. Like nobody wanted that. Right. Um, they didn't want more stuff. Our, our, we are like literally being buried in stuff. So when you go sell stuff, it's almost like, Bleh, I don't want more stuff. And so I started, started to see patterns. And when I would sell things, I was like, I saw th that was a, a problem solver. Okay. When I sell people's problems, my products sell. When I just try and sell the product, it doesn't sell. And so I became good by practicing. And it took me a long time. But guess what, Lizzie? We have the cheats of today, ChatGPT. So you go okay. to ChatGPT and say, how does this solve a problem? You don't have to take seven years like I did to, mm -hmm. to work on it. You literally can get it in two seconds from ChatGPT. So it has just sped up your time tremendously to be able to tell those stories. And so you have to like really think about who your target market is, right? Who are you selling to? You don't sell to everybody. If you sell to everybody, you're going to sell to nobody because you're talking to grandpas, you're talking to babies, you're talking to rich uncles, you're talking to snarky grandma. I don't know, right? You're talking to everybody and it's not going to work. And so for me, I was like, okay, I'm going to choose one person to sell to. Her name is Nikki. She has three kids. Her husband's a lawyer, but they're still living paycheck to paycheck because dang student loans are so expensive and they've got a mortgage and they've got a car and she's drowning. And all she wants to do is feel like a queen at the bake sale. That's all she wants because she doesn't want to go out and get a job. She wants to stay home, but she doesn't have time to do all this other stuff. She just wants to feel like a queen for a second. And so all of my products, I knew her so well, and I, I got, I got to know her better and better over time. Cause I practiced, right. I really got to show up and say, how can I serve Nikki today? How can I serve Nikki today? What is Nikki struggling with? And then that's how I started to craft my stories, uh, around serving her and she, her results became my driving force of Allison, I got to sleep an extra 10 minutes today. Thank you so much. Allison, I got to go to the bake sale and man, uh, and this is when we sold French fry boxes. And I was like, why are you cooking? Why are you baking? I mean, those are the treats that get picked last anyways. Go to the grocery store, get those mother cookies with sprinkles on them, throw them in a French fry box, tie a bow around it. You're going to sell out fast and be queen of the bake sale, right? And it was really just focusing on making her feel good. So if you're selling digital products, what is your digital product doing? Is it helping to speed up someone's pain point? Maybe you're selling a digital product on bookmarks. Uh, how many bookmarks does one lose in a 24 hour period? Like 30, right? And so selling bulks of 60, why? Cause I know you're going to lose those bookmarks and you need some in every single house. Cause you just don't read on the couch. You go read outside. You go read in the grass. You go read on the front porch and the back porch and the bathroom. Like you got to have them everywhere. 
And so when you, you really lean into that pain point, that's not only do you have a customer, you have a customer for life because people want their problem solved. And as long as people have problems, we're always going to be able to sell. And I think there's very good odds that people always have problems. <laughs> Yeah, I just think you have a superpower identifying how to cast the vision for them. I love it. But you're right. It's the repetition. It's like how, how we learn anything, right? Over and over mm-hmm. and over consistency and like studying the market. And But but gosh, I'd never thought to use chat GPT that way. I think some yeah. really big ahas went off with that. But okay, so we have to, I, we Wait, can't talk. I got to tell yeah, you one oh, thing. Um, my me. college professor, my English college professor told me to drop out of college because he was, he said I was the worst writer he had ever seen. (laughs) Wow. So if anybody thinks that like I was blessed with it, I wasn't, I I wasn't, I just got up and tried every single day. Okay. Keep going. Keep going. No, I'm with you. And, and I think it's important to say that like I, um, people now think of me as like, I still kind of, I can't even almost say it as being like somewhat tech savvy. You know, I can like build websites and I can do the social media. I was the person who literally could barely double click. You were a queen. Talk about the uh, God using the things of the foolish to confound the wise. That was me learning social media and web design. Okay. (laughs) So like all of these, it's everything is figure outable. So I always say, thank you, Marie Forleo. Um, Okay, we have to talk about influencers because you can't have a conversation with Allison J. Prince and not talk about the fact that we can like not have any email list, the fact that we could have literally no followers, and the fact that even if we weren't on Etsy, um, we could literally sell a ton of stuff because of influencers. So can you please just introduce that concept and how you teach that? Absolutely. And this is what I taught my daughters. And this is if you learn this concept, and again, you're going to have to practice, right? If you learn this concept, you will be able to sell for the rest of your life. Why? I cannot. Because it's how it's been working ever since there's been humans on the planet. So let's go back to like Mary Lou Retton, totally dating my time myself. When she was in the Olympics, they put her on the cover of a Wheaties box. And I convinced my parents to buy Wheaties. No little girl likes Wheaties. I don't even <laughs> think adults like Wheaties, right? But she influenced me to buy a product because I was like, I'm going to be like Mary Lou Retton, yeah. right? And then Michael Jordan comes out, Nike Airs. Everybody knows that story. And Michael Jordan wasn't even like that big of an influencer when Nike got him. He almost went with Adidas. And so, I mean, that one, <laughs> three generations are buying Nike shoes. The kids that are buying Nike shoes today never even saw Michael Jordan play. Yeah. Yeah. Why? Because he influenced people to be like Mike, right? Be like Mike, be like Mike. And now what's so beautiful is there's influencers everywhere, but we don't have to go and find the Michael Jordans or the Taylor Swift. Can you imagine like trying to get a hold of Taylor Swift in DMs? Hi, Taylor. Would you sell my earrings? <laughs> Hi, Taylor. <laughs> She's never going to answer you. Or Kim Kardashian charges like, I don't know, $5 million for a post. I don't like, I don't think that's realistic, especially for uh, small business owners. Um, And so what we have access to today, it's a tool that speeds us up years, just like chat GPT, right? It's our phone and it's small influencers. Small influencers are crushing the game right now. And let me, let me explain that. So Lily, have you ever been on social media? You're scrolling. And someone is like, oh my gosh, check out this mug. I love my mug at X, Y, Z. And you're like, oh, I want one of those too. So you click on the link and you go and you buy the product. Well, the business owner makes money and then the influencer usually gets a cut of it. And so it's such a win-win situation. The, The business makes money, the influencer makes money, and then the customer gets a really cool product. So it's a three way win that's happening right there. And anytime we can create three-way wins, it's like the magic happens. And how do I know this to work? It's because here's another business that I own. I tell you, I have issues, but I have a, uh, I started a blog with two of my friends, um, Missy and Shelly. I love them. We started a blog called How Does She 14 years ago. And I, as we were posting, I would put in links 
And I would be sending people to go buy products at other places. And I'm like, why am I sending their money away? This doesn't make sense. Like I wasn't making any money. I was sending money away. And so I was like, hmm. And that's when I started an e-commerce store because uh, I was learning the game. And then we started working with other businesses and saying, hey, do you have a link to send uh, so we can send traffic to? We make a little commission because now we have an audience and you make sales. And they were like, yeah. And so the businesses were super excited because of this audience that we had built that like, knew, and trusted us. We immediately built authority in that business and said, hey, go buy this product, go buy this product. So we, those businesses didn't have to start with zero social media. They didn't have to start with zero every, they didn't even need any of that stuff. We just sent them to the page to buy. And so over the last 14 years, I've watched how that works and how an influencer can directly make sales for small business owners. And the, okay, Oh my gosh, my brain's firing off right now because um, these influencers with Etsy, not only can they direct sales, but guess what Etsy loves? Etsy loves when you make sales. So what does Etsy do? It ranks you higher. Everybody thinks it's all about SEO on Etsy. That's a piece of it. But a bigger piece of it is sales. So if you can show Etsy that you're making sales, Etsy's going to be like, oh, something's happening over here. Let's make more sales. And so it opens them up to what their 92 million uh, buyers, active buyers over there. Right. And so really, if you just sit and just post something on Etsy and you're like, it's not selling, no one's seeing it. Right. Well, yeah, because you're not making Etsy any money. Etsy spends billions of dollars on this platform for us to sell and list a product for pennies. And if we don't do something for Etsy and we just stand there and we're whining, it's not working, it's not working, why are they going to give us any traffic? But if we go out there and we work with an influencer and we're like, hey, let's create this win-win, a win for Etsy because they're making sales because Etsy makes money. Thank goodness, because if they didn't, they couldn't pay their people to give us a site to sell on, right? A win for the influencer because the influencer makes money. And on Etsy, what's cool is they have an affiliate program. So the yes. business doesn't even have to pay. The Etsy seller doesn't even have to pay for the influencer. They just go through a reward style or shop style um, or yeah. And then the business owner. So the Etsy, wait, wait, we got the business owner, Etsy, we got a four-way win here. Oh my gosh. The business owner, the influencer is making money, Etsy's making money, money, and then the customer's getting an amazing product. Yes. Oh my gosh. A four-way win right there. Okay. So I'm sure I just overwhelmed and confused a whole bunch of people. So let me simplify that real quick. I know my brain runs a million miles a minute because I get They're so excited it. about this. You're <laughs> 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 yes. So the key, this is the secret. Okay. Don't go after the big influencers. You go after influencers that are nano influencers. Nano is a thousand to 10,000 followers. A lot of those influencers are just getting started. They're just learning their voice and they're really connecting with their audience. When you start to get bigger, it starts to get diluted. And so these really intimate, smaller accounts are crushing it. So you reach out to an influencer, right? Scroll through your phone, find someone who you think would be a good partner with, and you reach out to them. You're like, hey, I've got this amazing product. Would you like to make a commission from it? Let's partner up together. You got the traffic, I got the product, let's partner up together. And so you send them a product, they're in their Instagram stories. I mean, you can do it on TikTok, Facebook, all over the Facebook groups. Like Instagram's just one small little place where you can find influencers. So the influencer talks about your product, directs traffic to your store. You make the sales, Etsy notices it. You get a higher listing, Etsy shows more people. And it just is such a beautiful, beautiful situation for Etsy sellers. Because at the end of the day, Etsy wants you making money. Lizzie wants you making money. Allison wants you making money. <laughs> And so that's a way to speed up the process. That is a way to skip years and years of posting on social media, 
hoping that you'll win the social media algorithm. And heck, I, like living on social media, I don't want to do that. My social media account, I'm like posting maybe once a month now. In the beginning, I, I just didn't want to base my whole, all my businesses around social media because they get shut down. Then this happens and this happens and this happens. I wanted to do something else. And with influencers, it helped me to build that first company into an almost $50 million company. I was a school teacher. That's like a big number, right? Mm -hmm. I didn't have Facebook ads. I just used influencer marketing. And so for me, it works. It worked for my daughters, it worked for my friends. It's still working because new influencers, they want to get paid or they want a product swap or they want something for doing all that hard work, right? And so you reach out to them, you build that partnership. And then as you grow, they grow and it becomes this long term relationship. One of my cute friends, Shannon Tripp, when she had like 20,000 followers, a t-shirt company reached out to her and it was almost, she almost quit. She was at the point of almost quitting Instagram because she wasn't making any money. She was spending a lot of time on it. And she's like, maybe I should just quit. And this t-shirt company reached out and said, Hey, can we just send you a shirt? And Shannon's like, Oh my gosh, someone recognized me. Absolutely. And so Shannon put it up online what to her following and now Shannon's like over 600,000 followers. Oh and the gosh. other day she found that shirt, she put it on, didn't tell the business and was like, I love this company because they believed in me before I believed in me, posted it. And that business made bank that day. Just at, and, and Shannon was like, I don't even want your money. You just saw me in a way I didn't see me. And you've changed, you changed my life. And so it's just like such a cool partnership that can go on for many, many years when you work with influencers. So that's why I love it so incredibly much. <laughs> so I have a question for you. Can I be your coach? Since 2012, I've been working with business owners and all different walks of life and helping them figure out how to grow their businesses, develop themselves, work through fears and challenges, launch a new idea, or create a very fresh vision for their life. One of my core strengths is generating ideas and casting vision on a project, and I would just love to do that for you. Whether you need coaching for your Etsy shop or a completely different business project, I'm here to partner with you for breakthrough and brainstorm brilliant strategies with you. My experience in everything from corporate America to network marketing to consulting, web design, blogging, Etsy, Shopify, social media management, and now course creation and podcasting has given me quite the breadth of knowledge to help my fellow entrepreneur, and I would be totally delighted to work with you. You can book a coaching session over at howtosellyourstuff.com or shoot me an email at lizziesmiley at yahoo.com and we'll find out if we'd be a good fit. I cannot wait to meet you and hear what you're dreaming about. I just think it opens up possibilities that, especially in a place where you feel maybe a little bit powerless in the beginning, it just completely, it, you know, you feel like you've got to build it all yourself. And I encourage that. Like I tell my, my whole thing is I'm thinking I'm, I'm teaching legacy here. You start on Etsy because it's easy. You don't have to figure out the tech, figure out pictures, figure out SEO, figure out a product, figure out demand, learn that and leverage the marketplace. Then start building your email list and your social media, and then create your own website. And ultimately your goal is to use Etsy as a lead like to send leads to you. Like that's like the path that I really encourage because I, you know, we also deal with like Etsy shop suspensions and they're putting our accounts on reserve. And I still love the tool. I am your Etsy cheerleader all day long, but in a, in a, in a situation where we often feel kind of powerless, I think influencers um, change that game completely. Like it just from the, from the jump. And you're absolutely right about the algorithm. It will totally boost a, not even just a listing, but an entire shop. If you're creating your own sales. Um, I did a shop review a little while back for something, it was a product, I can't remember exactly, but it was something really off the wall. And um, when I went in to figure out, like I was looking at all the competition, trying to help this one seller do better. I'm looking at all the like the top best selling listings, every single one of them, it was a really off the wall product. Every single one of them was sending all of their own traffic, but they were showing up at the very top of the search results. So I just had a very practical experience with what you said. So Allison, I 
the other thing I was going to ask you, because I think the really intimidating part of this can be like the reach out part to the influencers. And I know like if you don't do this right, Instagram kind of gets mad at you for like being spammy and everything. Do you maybe have just one or two quick tips for like that piece? Just the, Mm -hmm. the first steps in approaching people. Yeah. So, but can I, I just want to touch on one point that you said that I just want to make sure everybody hears when you start your business, you control what you want to do and what you do not want to do. I have people who, and you do too, Lizzie, like they just want to sell on Etsy, do no social media, no email marketing and can still bring in income. And then other people are like, you know, I'm okay on social. Maybe they're not awkward like I am on social and they love it, right? Then do that. Like do what fits your personality. Don't, there's no boxes in entrepreneurship. That's what's so beautiful about it. Is you're like, I want to do that. I want to do that. I'm not doing that. I'm not going to do that. Right. And so I really love how we can define it. And I know there was, <laughs> I laugh at this. We all laugh at this one. My husband and I do, but there was like this vulnerability phase, I think in Instagram where people were like standing in bikinis and sitting in their bathtubs. And I'm like, I'm never going to do that. I am never going to do that. Right. I didn't need to. And other people felt like they needed to good for them. But I'm like, I'm not going to do that. No way. Right. So we truly get to choose what we want to do. Okay. So now let's get into the next thing, how to reach out to influencers. So this is how I approach it. Um, if you move in to, or no, let's say, uh, you've got a neighbor who moves into a brand new house next to you. Okay, so you've been there for years and the house next to you sells and the new people are coming in and they're starting to bring their boxes in. You're kind of peering out the window, not the creepy peering, just noticing, right? And they're bringing boxes in and you decide to go over and meet them. How do you approach that? Do you open the door and say, I am here, feed me dinner. By the way, my name's Allison. Or do you go over and say, hey, it's so nice to meet you. Can I help you carry these boxes in? Uh, Can I cook you dinner tonight? You probably don't know where your pots and pans are. How can I serve you? Like, which one's going to feel better? The first one, they're going to call the cops on you, right? The second one, you've made a best friend for life. Influencers are the exact same way. So when you approach them and you're like, sell my product, do this, do this, do this. They're like, I mean, they're going to block you, right? They don't have to call the cops anymore. They just hit a little button that says block. But if you go in and you say, Hey, can I serve you? Like the game changes. Uh, One of the things that I've done in the past to get influencers attention is I've just said, Hey, uh, I noticed from your stories that your husband's out of town. Can I send you the gift of time? And they're like, what? The gift of time, are you gonna send me a clock? No, 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 just just trust me. I can send it to a PO box. I can send it to your neighbor. I don't care, just somewhere we can go pick it up. And so I'll send them a box and when they open it, sure, I've got my product inside, right? That I want them to talk about, but I've also included paper plates and paper cups and disposable utensils. And I said, hey, thank you so much can I do your dishes for the next two weeks while your husband's out of town? This is your gift of time. I've got an influencer forever now. Why? Because I solved their problem. I didn't barge in. I said, let me solve your problem. Another gal, Christina, um, she's amazing. She sells dead palm tree leaves. She's got the coolest story ever. Makes more than a doctor. She goes in her backyard, finds dead palm tree leaves. (laughs) It's such a cool story. What she does is she goes out to influencers and her podcast is should be coming out soon. I'm so excited for this one. But what she does, she reaches out to influencers and is like, hey, I noticed you have a blank spot on your wall and you've kind of been like wondering what you should put in there. Can I just send you something to see if it will be a good fit? And sometimes she hears yes. Um, sometimes she hears no. She had one say, you know, I think your product's great, but I just don't have time to get a vase. And Christine was like, I'll get you one. I'll get you one. So she drove to the store, bought like a $13 vase, stuck these dead palm trees, which I know that you just got to see them. They're just beautiful. They're just (laughs) gorgeous. Sent her this package with a vase and ended up making her thousands and thousands of dollars because she listened. 
how can I serve you? I mean, that's, we're humans, right? We don't go in, we don't barge, we don't demand, but we truly go in there with, hey, how can I serve you? When you do that, that's when doors open. Uh, and, and then you start working on that partnership and it really helps accelerate you. Yeah, you're gonna have influencers that don't post because they got busy and their kid got sick and the dog peed on the carpet and they got distracted, right? Like that's just gonna happen, but don't hate on them because maybe in six months they'll come back to you and be like, I'm so sorry. Do you know what our uh, fourth quarter promotion fell through? Can I promote you? <gasps> yeah, yeah, right? And sometimes it's just not gonna work out or you're gonna hear no's. I'm willing to hear the no's, to hear the yeses, to make thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars. And so don't take it personal. It might not be the right time, but reach out to them as a human. Don't spam them. Don't call them by their influencer name unless it is their name. I get, dear, how does she all the time? <laughs> and I'm like, what? And then spell their name right. I have one L in my name. And when people are like A-L-L-Y-S-O-N, I'm like, uh-uh. If you can't, if you can't even look at the details of my name, more than likely you're going to miss the details of the promotion. Yes. And so, um, yeah, that's, I don't know. I feel that one in my soul, Allison. <laughs> <laughs> yep. So just be cognizant that you're talking to a human. And if the numbers intimidate you and you're like, oh, they've got 10,000 followers. Who am I? I don't even have an Instagram account. Just roll the number back and make it look like 1.0. <laughs> just add a decimal in there, right? They're literally looking for businesses to work with because Facebook doesn't pay them. Instagram doesn't pay them. TikTok doesn't pay them. They make their money working with businesses. Why not let it be you? We're getting ready to go into fourth quarter. They're already lining businesses up. Why not let it be you? All you need to do is just reach out. Reach out to them whatever platform you want to work out, work on Instagram, DMs, Facebook, Messenger, or Facebook, do Facebook Messenger, right? Send them an email too. Say, hey, I just shot you something in Instagram. I just shot you something in Facebook Messenger. Like, just be a human. That's all it takes is just to be kind and a human. I think we overcomplicate it for sure. So, mm -hmm. um, Allison, I've been obsessed with your course for several years now. I, I actually go back to it with some regularity, like with a coaching client or for myself or whatever, because there are so, there's so much in there. And I don't even know if you're promoting that right now, but I would love for you to take a few minutes and share how you can help these Etsy sellers if they want to move into working with influencers and really learn the professional, like the way that you teach it, because there's no one else I would recommend to learn this from a million percent. So tell us what we, how we can, we can find from you right now. So how about I do this? And I've never done this before. Uh, and I'll have to set a couple things up. So you have to give me a week. When, when does this go live? Um, how long does it take you to edit? We're two weeks out. I, we've, okay. we've got time. Perfect. 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 Okay. So I will send, let's use Lizzie as the discount code. L I E Z Z I E. L I Z Z I E. <laughs> yeah. Use Steven, Lizzie as the discount amazing. code. And I will get you the link. And we did what we called the influencer blitz in February, March this year. So it's all brand new content and it was a three day workshop, but promise me you'll go. I'll give you a code for free, but other people had to pay. So you got to act like you're paying a bajillion dollars for it, but it's a three day workshop uh, to help you to solidify your influencers. We had so much fun. It's only, I think it's like two hours a day day for three days. So it's not going to eat up your entire, I don't know, life. Uh, but that's how I break it down. I talk about the benefits of influencers. Like we go deep into a lot of the influencer stuff. So um, Lizzie, I will get you that link and that the discount code is Lizzie and you can get it for free, free 99. Just, just promise me you'll do it. Promise me you'll do it. Does that work? Uh, I'm speechless and that never happens. Thank you so much. <laughs> Yeah. Yep. And then I'm on Instagram, Allison J Prince, one L and I put the J in my name for SEO purposes. Which is brilliant. Yeah. Okay. So you can find Allison there. That's the best place and the web. And then we'll get the links for you guys. I need to ask you though, the story of Shannon with the, with the, which was it palm? <laughs> was it palm leaves? What, what kind of leaves Christina, was it? Christina. Palm trees. Christina. Uh -huh. Christina. Is that, was she on your podcast? So it hasn't been released yet. 
But let okay. me see if I can pull up her Instagram account. Because I obviously, after um, that story, that has to be linked or I'm going to get, I'm going to hear about it all day long. You will. So her <laughs> site or her Instagram is the blooming, B-L-O-O-M-I-N-G-P-A-L-M, the blooming palm. palm. And what what's cool is she's only got 3,000 followers. Um, and she, like, literally she makes more than a doctor. And it's it's dead stuff so she doesn't have to pay for inventory <laughs> she follows the dump trucks around and is like hey at first she had them drop them off at her house because she was like learning the whole process now she has a fulfillment center so the dump trucks drive to the fulfillment center trim them up like she wants them and then they ship them out for her so i was talking to her the other day and she's like allison i only work a couple hours a week and i make more than a doctor i don't know what to do <laughs> start another business <laughs> no because she she doesn't one thing i really love about this woman is she wants to be present with people so she doesn't want 15 businesses she wants simple she wants easy so she can truly show up as a mom as a friend as a wife as a daughter and i just have she's just amazing absolutely phenomenal so she's one she's my hero She's okay. Well, we'll look up at the blooming palm because that story is insane. And now we need to go blow up her Instagram with followers. And I will watch for that podcast. I'm in your podcast every week. I will be um, sharing that on my Instagram, guys. So if you're not following at How to Sell Your Stuff, make sure after you follow Allison J. Prince that you go there and I'll share when that episode comes up because you better believe I'll be the first to see it. That is a riot. <laughs> your stories, your people are so good. Like I never get tired of all the stories and the successes and all of it. So um, Allison, thank you so much. I, I'm extremely honored that you would take time to be here with us. And I know lives are going to be changed because what you teach works. I've seen it work for thousands and thousands of people in your groups. So just thank you. Yeah. And thanks to God. And if I, if anybody doesn't believe in God or place with the universe, like I love how we can all have different beliefs. Um, but I do have to give him a ton of credit, the higher power that believes in me when I don't believe in myself. So yeah, it is, it's phenomenal. And again, I show up not cause I have to, it's cause I get to now I get to see what happens when people believe in themselves. And then it's a dopamine rush. <laughs> when I hear these stories, I'm like, oh my gosh, that's so cool. And so I'm, yeah, I can't stop this. It's, it's an addiction. <laughs> well, we all officially need you. So please don't. And thank you God for <laughs> Allison J. Prince and for bullying her into all of this. <laughs> yeah, seriously. <laughs> <laughs> it's how it typically goes. So guys, what all else feels, I think like the nice little feather in the cap on this is that if you don't know what to do next and you're stuck, if you listen really, really deep to that still small voice inside you, whatever you call the the source yeah. of that, you are going to get just like Allison, just like me, just like so many of these other stories, you're going to get exactly what you need and you're going to become exactly who you were meant to be. And I love you. I am rooting for you. I will see you guys next week. Same time, same place. And in the meantime, Go make something awesome. Thanks, guys. And that's a wrap on this episode of How to Sell Your Stuff on Etsy. Thanks so much for hanging out with me today. If you're looking for more resources, head on over to howtosellyourstuff.com where you'll find podcast show notes, all the links from today's episode, the blog, courses, coaching, and more. If this episode was helpful to you, awesome. The greatest compliment I can receive from you is a rate, review, and subscribe on this podcast. Not only will it allow us to connect again on a future episode, it lets me know I'm providing you with value and helps other people find this content more easily. From the bottom of my heart, thank you for your support. Have a great day and see you next time.